November 6, 2023. This is the S&P 500 E futures mini on the 2000 tick chart using the NinjaTrader 8 platform. This is what the charts look like today. There wasn't any economic data to cause, well, cause any knee-jerk reaction at all. Things looked like it was pretty much within a big range, which is for the most part here. And it did break out and then come back into the same range. So the pre-market highs and the pre-market lows. There weren't that many setups that I could find today. And I did take a total of two trades. The second trade, I looked back in hindsight, and I think it was kind of an iffy trade. But even then, there wasn't that many setups, and it was kind of a slow day. So I'm going to get into the chart right now. So this is what the pre-market looked like. It was rather slow trading. It was very congested here. And it broke out, chopped around. And as you can see right on the open, you do have a new high. It's a first entry long. Technically, you have a second entry long here, but it's a terrible signal bar and just take one tick above. And it's right here, right at the open. This full bar finished in about four seconds. Well, maybe not four seconds, uh, about 11 seconds. So it's very risky, in my opinion, to take a trade right at the open just because I'm not really sure what's going to happen because the uh, overnight hours, after as well as the overnight and pre market, there's not as much volume. So you don't know if there's a bunch of trade tr traders who have orders ready that will execute right at the open. So I usually try not to uh, trade right at the open unless it's a very bulletproof setup. And this isn't a very bulletproof setup. Let's just move up. Breaks out of the pre-market high. Comes back in. Chops around. And I do see this is a new high. It's a first entry long. Pull back. It creates a second entry long here. Now it did create two legs down. And it could be coming out coming from a fail breakout. So if it's a fail breakout, you could be thinking it's a second entry long failure, but I'd had this trend line going up at the moment. And the only thing was, I'm not 100% sure at the time if this trend line was valid because you had an overshoot here and it doesn't quit, quite fit super nicely, but it does kind of fit somewhat nicely at the top. So I just kind of decided to wait and let it go. Drops around, comes back, and then it creates what I see as a higher low Confirmation of second entry long. Now, I don't know it's a higher low yet because you don't know if the next candle is going to actually take below. So when this candle actually opened here and it was chopping around for a bit, I decided this was probably a valid higher low. It closed above the EMA, semi-decent bar. It would only be better if it was green. So I decided to take one tick above, and I want to just get a quick scalp out of it. It is pushing it past the pre-market high, but I saw and I figured that this trend line might be valid now. It could be an actual channel. As this is trading in so i took a little bit of a risk and i was able to get in get out on the same candle looks like if i try to go for two points i would have gotten stopped out this candle likely would have stopped me out if not this candle would have stopped me out prices then drop breaks out of this blue channel right now and right now it just looks rangy so i'm just sitting and waiting it falls through and i'm thinking there might be this yellow down channel but it doesn't look that clean at the moment. It looks a little bit choppy and sideways. So I'm just waiting. You do have a second entry short here if it's a bad signal bar. Drops around, pushes up. It kind of hits the top of this thing. So I'm thinking there might be a resistance here and potentially a, a support down here. And at the time I was playing with various things, thinking this could be an overshoot. It overshoots some more. I do see a second entry long here. The new high, it's a first entry long, second entry long, but it's a terrible signal bar is what I would call an almost setup because at the time I thought maybe it's actually down to here, especially when I saw this double bottom here. The thing that would have made this a better trade is if it closed bullish instead of this red candle, more of a green candle. But if you took this, it was a little bit more aggressive and it looks like it would have worked out. Drops around, but it, it doesn't work out for too long before it comes crashing back through. Drops around, it hits the pre-market lows, which is this line here, this gray one here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Go back. Okay, chops up. You could see as pretty much first entry long, first entry short, second entry short. You can see as big visual. First entry short breaks out, makes it and tests a new high, second entry short. Now, this is also an almost setup, but this is a bad signal bar. You could argue that this is a triple test rejection and prices are coming back down, but I just didn't like the looks of this signal bar. I just needed it to be a little bit more bearish. And ideally not break back into this channel because this channel could still be in play as an overshoot here. And I was thinking of this potential to make another overshoot here. And it was, uh, if this was strong enough to push things back down, 
it seems like you have, you can make an argument for going both long and short. So it tells me I should just wait. Drops around. It's in this copy range. It's consolidating right now. I do see this is a new low here. Makes a confirmed new low. First entry short pulls back. Second entry short. Now second entry short. It's, it's a possible trade, but it feels aggressive because it's rejecting off the top of this pre market high, which is this light gray one here. Now it didn't reject previously, so it actually broke through, came back, broke through, came back. So it is making lower highs every time, but it's hard to know for sure if this was valid. Even though I saw one leg up pull back, a second move up, it didn't quite make the measured move, so it could be considered have played out. But I wasn't 100% sure if this is a little bit more. Uh, I guess this was already pretty bearish, but the way I saw it is I just didn't quite feel that comfortable. If it had made the measure move like this had flashed up, went a few a few ticks more up to here, and then came back down, then I would feel a little bit more confident. So I didn't know if there was enough oomph for the price action to actually push it up just a little bit more, and I didn't want to have to sit through that. Then price is continuing chopping, falls, and it looks like it's nicely within this range. So again, it comes up and makes a lower high again. So it's a higher, the high, lower high, lower high, another lower high. Another lower high here, yet another lower high. So there's could be an argument here if you saw it, which I didn't or recognize it. You could have said it would be there's a potential to short, and there was these big, big candles down. But every time it pulled back, it didn't quite have enough power to exceed the previous high. So by the time you see this and you see these big, big pushes down, and you see this, you could be thinking it's going to create another big red bar, but it also seems to be consolidating and holding against the midline of this range. And if you didn't see this as a midline, at least you know there's some kind of support happening here. Makes another big flash and then it continues down. So here, had I been, well, had I been more experienced and recognized at the time, then I might have decided like there's a potential trade here, except there's no clean second entries. You could say there's a new high, first entry long, second entry long failure, but if it fails and it closes down here, you don't really know if this is actually gonna hold because it makes a double bottom. And so it's hard to know for sure, but the, by the time you see this price action, this trade's already passed. And now it feels, in my opinion, I, I felt like I'm not sure if it's played out or not. So I had to just sit on my hands. Price to then continue moving, still staying within this nice blue range. Finally breaks out and it looks like it's starting to go downwards. So it's selling off, comes back up. I see this is second entry short. So do low here, first entry short, second entry short. Now the second entry short, by the time this forms, it's a possible trade because it is an overshoot. So what happened is it's pushing up against this uh, yellow channel. It not yellow channel, this orange channel. It had an overshoot, broke out, made a matching overshoot, and tested the highs. And it pressed up, and then now it's flashing back down. So it is second inch short. So you're thinking short. On top of that, this green channel has broken out. You're expecting it to test the lows, and this is a much more dominant downward push than this upward push. So it probably isn't as concerning to take a short as opposed to thinking there's going to be another leg up on this orange channel to the long. But the thing was, even though it pushed down, I wanted this signal bar to close below the EMA just to be extra certain. But since it didn't quite close below the EMA, I just wasn't sure. I mean, it's like an almost setup. Definitely it's a possible trade, but it feels a little more aggressive for my taste. It pushes down and I do see this lower high. So I see this lower high and then this is an inside bar and I thought, okay, this is probably because the EMA is holding. It's probably going to at least push back down and test the lows. So I try to get my order ready, and I, but I wanted to see what the next candle would do. It flashes down as soon as it broke below and it started chopping. I dropped my order one, well, not one tick, but the same lows here. And unfortunately, by the time I dropped it in, it was chopping around and never came back to fill me. And by the time it closed here, I already made my scalp, and I didn't want to put one tick below here because you have a clear potential support right here. But it turns out in this case, the support didn't hold and it flashed through. Of course, you don't know that at the time. So I'm okay missing that trade. And it was just kind of a missed trade. Ideally, it would have come back and picked me up and then flashed down. And then prices continue chopping. This is a the second and last trade that I took. I saw this is a new low. It's a first entry short, pulls back. It creates a second entry short right here, or at least it's about to. I like that the EMA is holding. I also like that it was a downward trend. So I actually entered right at the lows same matching lows here 
got filled and I was able to get my quick one point scout. Now, I will admit when I look in hindsight, this was actually kind of a lot riskier trade. The reason I think so is because I was thinking potentially there is a channel coming down here. There's whether however you drew the channel, there is an obvious overshoot here. And it made two attempts up. So it's chopping. Yes, it might come back down, but I also had this yellow channel in play. So when there's an overshoot here and it made another overshoot here, it could come back down to test this lows, but more likely it might chop sideways for a while. So <clears throat> this is turning into a consolidation. So this trade was definitely a little riskier. You could also see it as one leg up, which is one leg here, a consolidation, a potential second leg up, which is this measured move, this line that I drew here. So this could have been a one leg up consolidation, getting ready for a second leg up. So if you took a long here, depending on where you kept your stop loss, you might've gotten stopped out. If you kept it below this big green bar, then thinking it's gonna push up for a couple of points, then it looked like it would have worked. So my quick scalp here in hindsight, I think it was a lot more riskier than I should have uh, taken the trade for. So then it moves up, it kind of consolidates, pushes back down. I'm just sitting on my hands now. Technically, you have a new low, new high, first entry long, second entry long. It's a bad signal bar, though. Continues dropping down. It's holding this uh, trend line, this red down channel. is holding resistance. Comes back down and never reaches the other side and just kind of chops again. And I think I see a potential range that this is playing in, which was the bottom support here. And the top, I was playing with at the time, thinking maybe it's actually closer to this. There's an overshoot, and then there was just kind of a resistance rejection right here. I was playing with this at the time, then it broke out and it kind of chopped a little bit longer. I was thinking actually it might be up to here. And I was wondering if there's going to be a fail breakout here, even though I did see this yellow channel potentially moving up. And as soon as it got this far away, I wasn't certain this is a valid channel anymore. And this fail breakout might not even be a fail breakout. There's a complete correction now. It chops through and then starts consolidating. And I do see this gap which is just a note for myself. Every time I see a gap, something like this, this isn't a tradable gap in my opinion, because if the gap happened closer to here, where clearly this is the close and it opened uh, above where it closed, there was like a tiny little hop that happened right here. I think if something like this, in a better context, I would have put a trade entry right here, right at the close. Hope it comes back, picks me up and should be enough for a scalp. Now this is just something I'm observing. I don't have a clear idea if this is a strategy yet, it's just something I've noticed time and time again. Price then continue moving. It just kind of consolidates. It's kind of gotten really slow now. I don't see a good setup, and I'm just kind of sitting on my hands. It floats up, and then it goes into the close. So it wasn't too many trades I could find today, which is fine. And the two trades that I did take, uh, I think the first one was decent. The second one was a little more riskier, even though it worked out for me. So overall, slow day, but... I'm um, just lucky, I think, on that second trade. So hopefully that was helpful.